Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are Wonderbus Adventures. So today we are going to be hooking up our solar panels via our new Victron MPPT charge controller. So the main steps today are... Wiring up the MPPT. Adding it to the Victron Connect. Linking it safely with a solar disconnect. And seeing what power it generates in winter. All right, now in our install, our MPPT is already mounted um, and we've done that on a backboard, on aluminium, which is not in the instructions, but we thought for some extra cooling that would be fine because it's in a slightly confined space. Now that it's mounted, one of the first things that you need to do is install its own earthing cable for the MPPT. So I'm just going to make that up out of 25 mil cable and I've labelled it up here. So that calls for having a lug on this end and a lug on this end. And then we'll show you in a minute where that attaches in the van. These cables that we're running from the MPPT battery side, you have to put a fire on one end so we have bought some 25 mil ferrules, which I'll go and get in a minute. And on the other end, you need to put a lug. So this is a 25 mil lug, eight mil hole to go in the links. So we'll do, do these now. Jesus. This is a new current. <laughs> Maybe that's already closed, is it? No, I'm not sure thinking. Oh my God. So that new crimp tool worked all right. Although I did have to put it in the vise to get it fully crimped down, but that looks neat. So that'll go in and tighten up nicely in that terminal now. Every day drinking. Having it in the vise. Makes it a And cleaner, like the quality that we've got in this i think it's because kelly's here she's just an uh, absolute natural uh crimping and stripping as well done right let's go put them in the van starting with the ground no nope. no nope. the ground this one. that one i think we're gonna need this to be able to access it and i'll show you why now let's go And here you have the earth point basically for the MPVT. Now, in an ideal world, I'd probably recommend putting this on first or being aware that you need space to do it. So we have thankfully got space to get this in there, but obviously not a normal screwdriver. On the end, you've got a screw, a shake washer, a normal washer, and then a washer, a copper washer underneath. I need to take all of that out to get this lug over. Well, the ground comes through here and I've left a space in the middle and goes on this lug here. So this is the earth point, just about fit down in this, this gap and go on here. That's for the equipment ground. Now you've also got, just to point out on the links, a red cable that goes on here. You're gonna take this off, put this on the bottom and then put it over it and put it all back on how it came off. Right, okay, so. Big washer back on, the lock washer on top of that, the, the copper one, and then the nut goes on top of there, and then you torque it to spec. So the next thing to fit is the um, the positive and negative battery side cables, which go in here, that we've just made as well. Now you fit these first before you fit the PV side, um, and the reason being, so obviously the ground is is grounded now it's protected the reason why you fit this this side first is because it will allow the mppt to know what voltage your system is so it will set itself to in our case 12 volts um which is important the side first next side first always always all righty so let's see if these let's see if these Let ferrules, in a bit. See if these ferrules actually work this is where they don't fit in Cry. Oh, see it, man. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. Right. 
to that snuggly in there, but it's in the wrong one. We'll be right back. In a short break, I need to put it on the court. Okay, people, we're back, and it's in the right hole now. We'll get the old torquey out in a minute. And then we'll run it to this post on the links. Yeah. So I'm going to run it up here, just move this wires out of the way. This, I need to tidy all of these wires up, so at the moment, they are a little bit higgledy piggledy and we're gonna make sure we put in lots of P clips shortly. Got negative coming on there, the ground negative coming on there. Fuse goes on there. And then we need the positive cable, which will then go on top of there. And lastly, and on top of that, the flat washer, on top of the flat washer, you put the spring washer, and then the nut, quite right way up. And then torque it to spec, same way this end. So the fuse is in, this is in now. So if you flick them, actually, if I flick the master switch here on, we should, yay, we should get some LEDs pop on here now. Okay. If I go into the Victron Connect app, flashing up on screen for you now, we should start seeing some bits and bats. So if I go to the local, there we are, Smart Solar MPPT 15070. So if I click in there, connecting, it's probably gonna ask me to update it. There. Update just like usual. I love this stuff, it's brilliant. So it's updated now, it's just doing it all itself. The latest firmware, so there's been quite a few updates since this one was shipped to me, which was a long time ago. It's taken us longer than we thought to get it in. Thought to get it here. Fast forward for you, not us. So I'm just doing all of this so I can just check that it has recognized that the voltage of our system is 12 volts. So another cable that we need to go and get from inside. Um, we have got the V bus connector to go up to our servo. So I'm gonna go and get that now um, and connect it up to the servo so it will all talk to each other. Servo is like the brain that makes everything work. Now we're ready to move on and do the solar disconnect, um, which basically is going to, first of all, require us to get up on the roof. We installed 960 watts of solar on the roof, three large solar panels in an earlier video. So at the moment, the two cables that enter through the gland and go down through the back are carrying current. So before you work on it, you need to disconnect it. Um, and then we'll check inside to check that that is indeed disconnected. Now that disconnects off the roof, um, we're just going to use the multimeter to check that the cables are indeed not carrying any current. So we're going to go do that next. So we can install this solar disconnect. So this is a DC breaker. Um, and basically it's going to serve to disconnect both positive and negative feeds coming off of the roof. You see a lot of people do this just with a single breaker on the positive side. It's better and to code to basically cut both because the, the whole system is not grounded as it would be in a house. Um, and you need to make sure that it's a, it's a DC breaker, but it's rated for up to 250 volts because of the voltage that's going to be running through the solar array. So we found our uh, solar cables and we've marked them up with a label because we don't have different colored cables. So this is the positive, this is the negative, positive, negative. Mm. And we're just going to check that it is not live. So we're safe and yeah. ready to strip the cable. Yay. So our disconnect, we're going to put it in this cupboard actually. So previously, as a little cheat, I've drilled out two holes and the cables are coming through here. And we're going to install the box first so we know how long the cables need to be really. Um, so I'm going to do that first and pop the breaker in and just show you how that works. We have a DIN rail mount on here. It goes on the DIN rail and then you push it up like this. That goes on, over, and then you basically clip it up like that and then it's basically in place and we're making sure it's switched off. The next thing we need to do is to basically cut 
strip ferrule these connections, make sure they're going in the positive and negative the right way around. There you go. Right, okay. so what are you doing? Stripping some wire, hopefully. Yeah. But we will see. They're not great these, but actually they're uh, useful for this very thick stuff, which this is, it's double sheathed. So you kind of want... I wasn't strong enough to do it. Because it's the solar, solar cable, it is thick. And I, I don't know, I've just found on the first one that we've done in the bus, you crimp more than you need. Because once you put the ferrule on, you can always um, just cut the excess off the end of the ferrule anyway. And then underneath you've got some nice tinned wire. This is more than we need, but we'll show you why now. So Kelly's gonna try and add a ferrule. It's nice and long. Well, nice and straight. Don't twist them. Nice and straight is fine. Okay. Ferrule going on. Over here. Let me hold on to that for you a minute. Make sure you get getting over there all the way to the end. That's it. Strong enough for crimping, I think. <coughs> there we are. So it's nice and neat. And obviously we're going to trim that excess off now. And key trim. And then we need to repeat that on the other end. And then we're going to put red on the red one. And then we can go and put that in the bus. One done. And three, two, one. Now we can go and wire this into the breaker. All right, that's wired in now. So we've got the positive and negative coming through the top, coming out the bottom, and it's off. Um, I'm just gonna go check the roof and reconnect it back up. Once that's flipped back on, I should, I should be able to use my multimeter to basically check to see if we've got voltage then at the top. We know that it's off and isolated, um, and that the, the, the so the ice is doing its job. Okay, reconnected, multimeter on. Then we're gonna pause and go have some lunch. Let's check. Okay, so we've got that in the top here. 109.8 volts. 109.9 volts. And at the bottom, check, we should have nothing. So from the seven disconnect, we're going to pass the cables through the cupboard. We're just doing these up, we've just put the positive and negative PV cables in. The ferrule has helped a lot actually, it's, it's uh, given it a nice sort of biting point. Um, we'll just put a couple of p flips in there to secure those wires. All of this does need tidying up, but... Okay, so that is secure. Now, I'm just gonna check that everything is obviously in the right place. So we've got positive, positive. TV goes positive, negative, negative. Likewise, positive, positive, and then coming off the links. We've got the positive going on to the positive bus bar through the fuse, negative. And we've got the ground point on the ground point. So, by my reckoning, we're ready to switch on our system first. So switch on the master disconnect first. Give it a couple minutes to just boot up. It does, does take a little while to wake itself up. And then we should be able to flick on our solar panels and see what we're getting. Right, exciting times. So you can see our Servo GX that at the moment, our PV charger is zero watts. But our hub is inverting so if we flick the disconnect now we should see what we're going to get bear in mind it is a winter's day it has just stopped raining but let's see okay ready yeah on oh, oh yes it's ramping up five watts baby Yeet. it should be way more than that we've got 960 watts on the roof so six watts Eight watts. We'll be right back. 21 watts. Sorry for the look of confusion there, but basically we're pulling 12 
watts and we were like that's not right so we've contacted chris and it is right it's because it's going dark and it's the middle of winter and it's raining so we'll come back to you momentarily when the sun's out we're going to the race dinner with mum and dads <laughs> join us on a friday we've let the solar run all week and we've had a lot of weather this week there's been rain hail wind loads of clouds and we have had some sun as well so we can show you what we've basically got on here so up on screen now you can see that at the moment on a grey winter's day we're only pulling like 50 watts and at the moment it is 11:31 in the morning however if we have a look at our history tab over the past few days um we've pulled some pretty decent solar for the uk really i have ordered uh squeegee to clean the solar panels off just to see if we can squeeze a little bit more out of them but for the time being, because the batteries aren't under load, this is going to be more than enough to keep them topped up. And we're really excited to see what the solo can actually do on a nice sunny day and not in the middle of the winter. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave us a comment below and let us know how your week has been. Yeah, take care, guys. See you next time. One, two, three. Bye! Bye.